nickel and dime God. Oh man, I got so busted with that one time, you know. I, God goes, oh really, Nando? It's a testing of your faith. Our attitude of gratitude origin because we're not attached to money because we realize it's not our money in the first place. Everything is His. Everything above the earth, on the earth, beneath the earth, God created. God created money for so that we can enjoy some of the things in life. Notice the poor widow woman gave all she had. She was a poor widow woman. She was broke, but she went and gave all she had as tied to, tied to God. And the rich guys just you know, threw out what they think they tipped God. Remember this, and somebody told me this before, and I, I, I cringed at this. Whatever you give, God is watching. And he's checking your heart. When I heard that, oh, I said, Lord, forgive me. Let me give with a grateful heart. It's because everything is yours. Philippians 4.19 says, My God will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. My God, your God, will meet all of your needs if you give it willingly and generously. This is a New Testament Okay, teaching on giving that we would be helpful for you guys. It's 1 Corinthians 6, 16 2. It says, On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income. This passage brings up four points. Number one, we should give individually, we should give regularly, methodically, and proportionately. The matter of your giving is between you and God. It's not about pastor it's not about the sanctuary, it's not about denomination. What, okay? It's between you and God. How grateful are you? He is always, He always, okay? He always takes account for our circumstances. Sometimes you cannot give because it's out of our control. We make less money or the economy goes bad, whatever it is. He knows that these controls are out of our controls, but He wants us to give proportionately with a grateful heart. The important thing, we must see giving as a privilege, not a burden. We should not give out of sense of duty rather than love for Jesus Christ and to advance His kingdom. The deeper question is, okay, what is our priority in life? Is Christ really first? Or is He last? Okay, if He's not first in your life, something else is. Amen? And that's really important. That's a, important to understand. Make Christ first in your life. Ask Him to guide you with His wisdom about your giving. It's not about what I say. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Is He convicting you today? Is He convincing you today? God wants generous. Our, God wants to be generous to us. He wants to provide everything we need. But again, it depends on the portion. When we give with a grateful heart. Here's the truth. It is impossible to outgive God. There it be that. It's impossible to outgive God. The more voluntarily you give to Him, the more He'll give you back. When you give, He will give you more to give away. Isn't that cool? Every time we give something away, oh, we get something in return. Okay? Just, this just happened to us. Okay? We gave something, but we got something back to it. Where did it come from? Okay? We need it. Okay? <laughs> We needed a little high, uh, little uh, walker for for Jordan. She's Jordan is seven months old and she's just going all over the place, right? So we wanted to buy one, and, and God goes, "No, go look for one." And Kyle calls us, "Hey, Dad, okay, uh, there's bulk pickup at, at at you know at the military base over here. You should go look around." So I said, "Okay, we'll go look around." So we went over there. We found two walkers. Isn't that cool? All it was, okay, they, they were rotating and they were throwing it away. So we picked up Walker, we washed it, and, and there goes Jordan, boom, all over the place. And guess what? Two of these, need eh? right next to it. Brand new stuff. We picked it up, and guess what happens? There was more God going to give us. Why? Because I was looking for, for a high trip, because I could, no, ooh, I can spin around, eh? you know, I, need it. I can lean back. <laughs> why, God, again, why? It's because we were willing to do the little things, okay? And God answered the prayer that we always have. Okay, remember this. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 8 says, Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a big harvest. No, he got a small harvest. But one who plants generously will get a generous harvest. 
generous crowd. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously, generously provide all your needs. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Anybody want left over? Okay? To share with others. And that's really important. Number three, see beyond your giving. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 13 says, Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. They will thank you. They'll thank God for you. So two things happen. We result in this ministry, ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met. Wherever there is a need will be met. And they will joyfully express their thanks to God. To God be all the glory. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. So when you are giving, okay, if you don't have sticky fingers, God will give you more than you can ever expect. God wants to partner with you to bless others, okay, not only in spiritual ways, but in practical ways as well. Needs are met, God is glorified. You know, as Christians, there's nothing better than that. God is using you for His glory, and He trusts you with the finances. As your pastor, I want to see each and every one of you succeed financially, to be generous, to help others, to do good in the world. I pray that God will meet all of your needs according to His riches and glories, not your wants, but your needs. I pray that you don't get in debt by making purchases that you cannot afford. Giving God the best, not your leftovers. Things of the world is just momentary. You cannot take it with you. It's okay to have them. But etern eternal treasures, God is prepared for us in heaven, is infinitely better. It will never rust. Thieves will never steal it. So here's some, as I close, here's some basic truths to consider regarding the life. Number one. Obeying God's vision will bring God's provision. Wherever He guides, He provides. When you say, God, I'm going to do what you want and ask me to do, regardless if I have the money or resources to do it, I'm going to do it anyway. And God will provide everything that you need to, to get it done. We're building an extension to our, to our our home, just a little square feet. We didn't have the resources, but God did. Went to the bank and said, you know what? We could give you a home equity three times the amount that we wanted. What? Why? You have great credit. What? Our credit score was in the upper 800s. What? And they called us back. Do you want more money? Hey, why? We paid on time and we're debt free. Now, the permitting was supposed to take a long time. Guess what happens? God fast tracked it. Why? Because we gave God his portion. We didn't say, oh, we cannot, we cannot give to the God because we've got to build this, da 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 da. You know what the interesting is? Our extension okay, costs less than an average pickup truck. An average pickup truck is $35,000. $35,000. I could put plenty of pickups in the back of my, my house. Just think about that, okay? With God, all things are possible. Number two, do what you can and God will do what you can't. That's a partnership. Cheerfully, okay, cheerfully give whatever you have, however small it is, and God will multiply that just like the fish and the loaves. But he, if you give him nothing, he will not, he can't do anything with okay? you. You have to give it with a grateful heart. Number three, God will give you more than you expect if you are generous. The more generous you are, the more God is willing to give you because he can trust you to accomplish his will. To God be all the glory. And number four, there is a waiting time between sowing and reaping. Okay? Giving is not 
Okay? It's not, again, it is not a microwave thing. You, God will not, He can't. He can wave His hands and make it happen right away. No. But He will choose, okay, to help you transition from glory to glory to be more like Jesus. Whatever you need, okay, remember this, plant a seed. If you want to smile, smile more. If you want to hug, hug more. If you want money, plant money. <coughs> Why? <coughs> God says you cannot plant this. Plant, okay, you cannot plant, plant, plant pineapple seeds and expect guava. Amen? Whatever you want, learn to plant a seed and wait. Be patient. Be prayerful. There is a delay between sowing and reaping. Harvest is not automatic. It will take prayer. It will take time. It will take patience. It will take trust. Let's go back to my leaking car. My car was overheating and I needed to find out what was it. I checked. I prayed. I checked. I prayed. I searched. I prayed. I prayed. Then I did. Why? Because I needed the, my car to work properly so I wouldn't have to worry about it breaking down when I least expect it. So where are you leaking? Fix it. If you're leaking, you're not operating as God designed. If you're not, if you're leaking in your money matters, I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict you, encourage you to point out where you are leaking and you take the courage to repair the leak. If you don't, then like the engine in my car, how many of you engine line going like this? And some of you are not looking at it. Engine, engine, engine. It will overheat one day and eventually break down. Amen? Let's pray.